right? I, I was very blessed because I went for a session by, by Melvin, you know, and that gave me the energy. And yeah. this energy allowed me to bless more people and they had the energy to bless even more people, right? And, and that's the power of being surrounded by people who, who inspire you, mm. right? And it's very important because if we can't be inspired, how on earth do we inspire people? I tend to realize that a lot of business owners that I know or, or entrepreneurs that I know, they had a decline. So they were fearful and you know they were afraid of losing the stuff they have. They went on a, on a defense and actually that causes them to lose even more. Exactly. exactly. The fear of losing actually caused them to lose even more. Yeah. To be a successful entrepreneur, it's not about learning how to thrive, but it's about the ability to survive first when things do not go well. When we can survive that, uh, we can thrive in any environment already. Yeah, so survive until you thrive. You've probably heard that your story is your brand. So how can ordinary entrepreneurs and salespeople like you and me tell our stories in a way that cuts through all the noises in this overcrowded social media world and reach the audience that we want? Join me as I break down storytelling secrets that have helped me achieve over 8 figures in revenue as well as interviewing some of Asia's most prominent names and rising stars to uncover their stories. I hope this show will inspire you to be more vulnerable and share your story to the world because your mess is your message. My name is Gabriel Wong and welcome to the Story Impact Show. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Story Impact Show, a show where we dive into the story of successful entrepreneurs, business owners, high performers, so we can discover what they are doing to be at the top. As usual, if you like my content so far, please help me to smash the like button and to subscribe to my channel as this will help us with the algorithm of reaching out to more people. We're also picking two random lucky winners uh, from our comments uh, and we're going to give them this free copy of the Traffic Seekers book. Now, we're going to pay for everything, even including the shipping. This is a book that is going to show you how you can get unlimited amount of traffic, leads and customers into your website and into your funnel. So go ahead and comment whatever you've learned at the end of the video and we will pick two lucky winners every single week. All right, everyone, welcome another, uh, to another episode of the Story Impact Show, where we dive into the story of successful entrepreneurs, business owners, high performers on their stories to see and to learn what they are doing to be at the top. And today I have with me a special guest, and his name is Caleb Lowe. So Caleb, can you just say hi to the audience? Hey, everyone, and th thanks, Gabriel, for having me here. I'm a massive fan of yours, a uh, little fanboy moment, lah, so... Very honored to be here. So thanks for taking your time out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for, for, for the audience who do not know who you are, could you just tell the audience about uh, a bit more about who you are, what do you do, uh, hmm. and you know, what, what have you been busy on recently, in the, especially the last few months? Wow, where do I begin? So, hi everyone, my name is Caleb Lau and most of you know me as the brand coach. Uh, in a nutshell, what I do is I help business and sales leaders to connect better so that they can influence more. Uh, social media is one of my playgrounds to help people achieve that, but I think branding really goes beyond social media, right? Uh, it goes to, to being you as a way of life and letting people love you because of that. Wow, uh, I think, what have I been busy with? Wow, um, I think Circuit Breaker has been quite a eye-opener. Right, I think it, it, it crushed the balls, right? But it also created many opportunities for, for those, depending on how people want to perceive it, you know? And, and to be honest, in April, right, it crushed my balls flat. You know, it, it powdered, put, pulverized it to dust. You yeah. know? And I went to a mini phase of like, self-doubt and hey, what's gonna happen next? And yeah. just before Circuit Breaker happened, I even had a client um, who, a very hot prospect, almost on the brink of saying yes to my premium coaching service. Uh, days before Circuit Breaker, she said, Caleb, um, because of finances, of the uncertainty, I'm gonna to have to say no to this. So that, that kind of like was my start to circuit breaker, right? Yeah. And it led to a whole lot of uncertainty whereby should, um, should I just read up my finances and expect to earn less? Should I spend less? Should I just expect to have no clients to the end of the year, right? And then plan my way, plan my, my upturn towards the end of the year. You know, and that, that was my mindset, you know. And then you realize, man, when everybody's feeling down, right? Then you realize that's when the opportunity is. Don't you, don't you agree? Yeah. I realized that everyone was sitting down. Yeah. And I was very blessed because I was sitting down, but there was one, one legend, one Singapore legend whom I believe you've already interviewed countless times. This is a Melvin So, right? I just sat into one of his uh, webinars. And to be honest, I forgot the topic already. Really. I, no, I, I forgot what I talked about. All I know is that right? he just, why oh, I, I know he curses a lot. <laughs> I know, I know, exactly. But he curses in a way, it just reinvigorates the energy back in you, man. So, so yeah. I think from there, I just felt uh, a little 
a bit of, of um, I exhaust some of the energy. And somehow that gave me the energy to give energy to others, right? And just by giving energy to people, giving them value, inspiring them, you start to invite a lot of opportunities that you had never ever saw coming. Yeah, and that, because of, when, when that happened, right, man, opportunities just blew up and, and it's been, Circuit Breaker has been a huge blessing, yeah, for, for, wow. for us. I mean, we are, we are considered as what, non-essentials, right, in, uh, yeah. by the Straits Times, but man, I've never felt more essential in my life than, yeah. than before. You know, so it's, it's been amazing. La. It's been amazing. Yeah. What, what were some uh, examples of opportunity that came because of the circuit breaker, because of the lockdown? Right, right. No, thanks. That's, that's a great question. I mean, um, in the past one and a half years, I've been focusing a lot on coaching people. I think it's uh, something that I feel very, very strongly for. I think in, in, when I was 14 years old, you know, when I was in secondary school, I had a dream. I had a dream career. It's to be a social worker. And you're like, hey, which 14-year-old boy, uh, ever dream of being a social worker. Now, I've, been, I've been blessed by having a mom in the social work field. In church, I had a, a mentor uh, who was also in the social work field. You know? So that, that gave me a lot of, uh, of uh, it aligned me to their, to their way of life, right? Just by being around these people. And I kind of wanted to do that as well, but life never turned out the way you always planned. But I think deep down, there's always that little social worker in me. So coaching was a very nice, natural fit for my personality, right? And, and I think doing the one-to-one clients um, it allowed me to see transformation in their, in their lives, not just about their own brand, but in their own personal lives, right? So I've been very comfortable doing branding uh, for, for coaching. But the problems that coaches, that, that coaches have uh, is that they, they meet people at a very small scale level, one-to-one, one-to-one, one-to-one. So for a coach to just be known to a mass public audience, it is always a little bit difficult when compared to a trainer, right? Because trainer, you're one to many, you take one photo, the authority is there. Right? Coaches, one-to-one, one-to-one. Now, if your clients are not high profile, it is very hard. Thank goodness my clients are not too low a profile. Right? So my, my difficulty was always breaking into the training scene or getting speaking engagements. Right? But I think once Circuit Breaker started, right, then you realize that the training scene completely revolutionized. People who had trainings from, for, the, for the whole year plan ahead went to zero on the spot. It yeah. leveled the entire playing field for everybody. Right? And it became uh, whoever was the fastest to go onto the webinar will win the game, right? Not just the fastest plus quality content, uh, right? Fastest yeah. with bad content, they, they tank faster than, than they ever rise, right? Yeah. So I think that, that was really the turning point where I was forced to, to do what you have been doing all along, doing webinar stuff, right? And, and thank God it impacted a few people from just a simple um, organic 55 people coming in for your webinar. Then from then on, they, they brought in, this 55, they brought in their own people until I, had, I could run a second webinar for 30 packs, right? With, with zero marketing of mine. And from the 30 packs, it grew to 300 packs. When somebody was a leader of, of, of a massive team and she brought 300 packs into the, into the next webinar. And that was, that just started the ball rolling la, of getting opportunities and opportunities. And this is the power of social media. Once people realize that, that this person got potential, they will follow. Right. That was the, your case where you came out of the blue, you know, uh, this Gabriel Wong whose account was banned and in, in a matter of months, you know, <laughs> this legend was unearthed and he, he removed Excalibur from the, from the stone, right? And this is the thing <laughs> on social media, right? The moment you have some kind of attraction, people begin to be interested in you. And, and this from a, a, from a coach who has a decent following, right? And I could impact people on a very powerful level one to one, right? This webinar allowed me to reach a far greater audience from Taiwan, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, uh, Hong Kong as well, right? And I think from there, um, people's interest in me just, just grew. Uh, people started to connect, people are connecting each, with each other online more. So I got involved in that connection and it led to things like a Far East organization um, uh, talk. And I think you, you also were, were, had, a, had a talk at Far East, right? I had, I had that, that led to getting a client from there. It led to, um, to, to getting corporate HR gigs, uh, corporate gigs through, through top sales companies uh, in the insurance firm. So I've spoken to three uh, insurance companies in Singapore, three big ones so far, and I've closed one, one of them as a client, right? Oh. And, and these training opportunities were, would not have come my way if, if not for circuit breaker, yeah. a changed mindset yes. and giving a lot of value. Yeah, so, so, that, so that has been a huge blessing. So in a sense, circuit breaker allowed uh, the brand coach brand to grow even faster, right? Then prior to, 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 to circuit breaker. Yeah, so this is in a nutshell, a little bit of what has been going on. 
I, I love it. I just want to take a backtrack on that uh, before I ask you more about branding because yeah. you mentioned that, you know, that Circuit Breaker is a blessing to you. Now, I know that some of the viewers was listening right now yeah. um, when we talk about Circuit Breaker, you know, it already ended, you know, why are we talking about that? Because, yeah. you know, I don't think the scenario is, um, is getting any better, right? I mean, if you look at the numbers of infection cases going up yesterday, just yesterday alone, I mean, depending on when you're watching this, uh, yesterday as of this recording, uh, Melbourne, right, uh, Australia has just locked down uh, for the second time. Yep. Right. So all I can say is this. So so we're gonna we're gonna come into we're gonna come to the topic of the circuit breaker again and and why is it a blessing, and that if you miss the first round, mm. you know there is still a second round coming or there could be a second round coming and you want to be prepared for that. But what's funny is that what's yeah. funny is that some people are still they they, they they think phase two is going back to normal and they are going back to the old way of doing things. Like I I don't understand. And, and, you know, but now it is getting more and more clear that there's a possibility of a second wave, right? So if you're not prepared for the first run, no one blames you, right? Because who knows that the world will go on the lockdown, right? But if you are really not prepared for the second time, right, you need to knock yourself in the head. So, uh, so I want to talk a bit about, about, about Circuit Breaker and why, why it's interesting that you said it was a blessing. Yeah. Um, what I realized, what I tend to realize, and, and what you said was that it, it, actually lo- it actually leveled the playing field, right? right? Because there were speakers, global speakers, people who were like 10 years ahead of you who had more connection, more, uh, more network whatsoever, yes. right? They, they went back to nothing in a way, right? They went back to, to zero, ground zero again, mm-hmm. and they have to pivot with what you did well, you pivot online. Yeah. And I realized that every time there's a crisis, there's uncertainty, you were in an uncertainty, you were in a, in a, in a state of fear. Mm-hmm. Same thing, you know, when, when this whole thing, I mean, although I was a bit more optimistic, I've always believed in online, but yet, of course, there is still that uncertainty, but it is acting in spite of fear, mm-hmm. right? Acting in spite of fear that, that pushes us forward, right? That, that makes us shine, right? When everyone is fearful. So my question to you is this, like, um, you are in a state of uncertainty, in a state of fear, you know, what causes you to just decide to just carry on and just push forward? Wow. It, it wasn't easy to be honest. It wasn't easy. I mean, just to give you a bit of context into why I had a lot of fear in the end March and, and April. So far, I've already mentioned about how um, it was quite smooth for me until uh, one deal, which was almost a yes, became a no purely because of financial concerns, yeah. right? Um, but if you just look back a few, few months before, it was... My, my business slowed down a lot in November for this reason. I, I got hit with the curse of depression. Right? And, and no matter how much you look at your screen and try to do your work, the brain cannot process anything. Right? And I didn't realize that until a month later. So for a whole month, I was trying to write social media posts like what I've been doing all this while, like what I've been telling my, my clients on how to post uh, strategically. But on my end, I couldn't produce anything meaningful. Right? So I was standing blankly and I was in my WeWork office. I was paying WeWork on a monthly basis and not receiving any income. And my mind was just tired. Right? And it wasn't only till February that, I, that, it, that it got lifted up. Right? So I only had really a, a month and a half prior to Circuit Breaker to just get things back up and running. Right. Thank God I got some clients in the in the February and March because I had the energy, I had the I had the thought process ability to, to do it. But just as it was picking up, circuit breaker hit me. And then it just flattened the playing field already. Right. So that, that was how tough it was for me. That was where all the fear was uh, was coming from. Right. And you kind of know like one month circuit breaker, no lah, even one month, it'd be two months, and it really was two months. Yeah. Right. And and so that does really give people an insight into how scary it was for me personally. On top of that, what was everybody showing on social media? Circuit breaker. Um, that uh, all the people were looting the, the supermarkets, right? Shortage of this, shortage of that. Malaysia closed down their borders. It was just fear after fear after fear. And you, you realize if you're not careful, uh, you get sucked in. You just get sucked in and you kind of blend in with everyone else, right? And, and the moment we, we lose control of that thought, but it's a very, very, it's crazy dangerous. In fact, I see I have a couple of friends who still think that Circuit Breaker was, was an irritant in their business because it cost them so much opportunities. Right? I, I was very blessed because I went for a session by, by Melvin, you know, and that gave me the energy. And yeah. this energy allowed me to bless more people and they had the energy to bless even more people. Right? And, and that's the power of being surrounded by people who, who inspire you. Mm. Right? And it's very important because if we can't, be inspired how on earth do we inspire people 
Mm. Right? And this is the thing about personal branding. So is this brings back to the first criteria of, of how I define personal branding. You must inspire people. Okay, if you can't inspire people, why should people lean in on you? Right? I've never met somebody who says that, okay, I want to join this financial advisory team because the leader is mediocre. I want to follow Gabriel Wong because he's, he's terrible at what he does. I want to join this real, real estate team or this network marketing team because the leader is super negative. If yeah. they've never met anybody who decides to go for mediocrity, right? Yeah, that's a good one. So if they're not choosing that, or we're not, if we're not realizing that we need to inspire people, right? How on earth do we attract a crowd, right? Because you have people who are like-minded, they're attracted to your energy. You have people who need help, they will cling on to you. Mm-hmm. And your word is their green light, mm-hmm. right? And that's how important personal brand is, right? So I, I realized that if I cannot be a leader, I need to find help. And thank God that 30 minute session with Melvin Soul gave me the fuel I need to last me all the way to even, even today. Mm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. I think the other thing I caught was that like, um, when you say that some people felt that a circuit breaker was uh, irritant to them because it caused them opportunity, yeah. right? I realized because they went on the defensive rather than offensive. Yeah. Right? Like in a time of uncertainty, like whoever is listening to this right now, right? Right now, there's another round of uncertainty coming. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, things may get worse again. We do not know, right? But when there's uncertainty, when there's fear, don't go on a defense, right? Don't go on a defense when, when, when there's fear, right? You should go on offense because that's where everyone is out in the market. Your competitor is being wiped out and you are, you're the only one left, right? And, mm-hmm. and this is not a time that you, you play defensive and, and keep right, what you right. have. You keep what you have when times are good, when there are a bunch of people out there and, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a red ocean, okay? Uh, mm. It's a bloodbath, right? Uh, when the times were good and everyone is out, right? That's where you you play a bit more defensive, right? But when when times are bad, when everyone is no longer around, the streets are in a way the streets are empty. They are, they are, your your competitor is no longer around. That's the time you go on the offense, not on the defense. And, and what I realized, I tend to realize that a lot of business owners that I know or, or entrepreneurs that I know, they had a decline because mm. they went on offense. So they were fearful and, you know, they were afraid of losing the stuff they have. So rather mm-hmm. than, you know, taking action to kind of take some risk, of course, calculated risk, uh, yeah. they went on the, on the defense and actually that causes them to lose even more. Exactly. exactly. The fear of losing actually caused them to lose even more. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's fantastic, man. I love how you rephrased it. Yeah. Yeah. So I love the spirit that uh, as well as what you, you mentioned, you know, how you want to continue to inspire people, right? Especially in, in times of fear. Yep, that's the yep. time that we should step up and inspire others, yep. right? So um, let me just ask you back, uh, or basically just dive in a bit about your, about your backstory and how you became actually a brand consultant. Because like, okay. um, I started seeing your name mm. somewhere like a, a bit more last year, right? right. So it, has, it hasn't been a very long time, right? But I started seeing more of it, more, more and more of your stuff uh, on Facebook, on social media. And uh, personally, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Right, and that's one of the reasons why I asked you on the show, and yeah. we just want to find out like how how did you or how did you become a brand consultant in the first place? Like what made you became uh, a brand consultant, and like yeah. what do you think is the defining moment for you to become um, for for your growth in this mm-hmm. short time? Right, it, it's been quite a quite a humbling journey, if I must say. You know, um, I I I've never been one to claim credit for everything that I've achieved, and I've achieved something that I think is. Fairly, fairly commendable, not, not fantastic, not, not, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm the greatest brand coach in the world, but you know, um, some of my clients today are like top lawyers in Singapore, they are top executive coaches, they are high level trainers, um, even those who are in sales, they're usually in a six-figure range. Those are people who come to me, right? And, and I'm also doing a couple, I've been doing a couple of collaboration projects with, with a subsidiary of the Alibaba group, right? And I got one, one six-figure project still pending with them, uh, or depending on how COVID-19 um, pans out in China. Right? So there's some things in the works, but these are some things I've managed to achieve probably through branding. And but as I look back, right, a lot of things I thought were were it wasn't as though I was always the most impressive leader growing up. It wasn't as though I was the most uh, charismatic person uh, growing up. In fact, many of you may have heard my story, but you know, when, when I was in secondary school, I was so insecure about my body uh, because I was so skinny. You know, when, when you hear a girl saying, Caleb, I wish I had your figure. You know, to hear it once or twice is one thing, but to hear it over and over again, oh, you're very, you're very skinny, you're very skinny, you know, it, it removes that masculinity. It emasculates, the, yeah, yeah. it nibbles into the soul until there's nothing left, right? And it happens over years, right? So after a while, you grow to hate yourself, 
right? You, you, your sense of value drops and you start to want affirmation. You know, for people who seek affirmation, uh, they are super, they get a bit irritating, right? Because they're just trying to leech off people's, uh, leech, trying to manufacture affirmation. It, it, it becomes very leeching. Right? And I had that impact on people. I was always trying to get validation, right? And if I didn't receive it, I'll feel insecure, you know? And this had a very negative impact in my life. For, for, you know, for people who are insecure, right? There are two ways they will, they will respond to, to, insecure, to true insecurity. One is they either cower in fear and they just become very silent. The other group, uh, they will be very arrogant because they want to prove that they're always right in hopes that people will accept them, right? Mm. And, and I was the latter. So in my, in, my, in my journey to try to win affirmation, to win friends, right? To always argue that I'm right because people, if I'm right, people will value me. I was actually pushing people away. Yeah. How do I do that? Well, in army, it got so bad that I was actually demoted from my, as a section commander, right? Uh, who, how many people get demoted in army? I was one of them, right? Even to today, if I were to meet my old army friends and, and for some reason, I'm not in the same um, NS unit as them, I would probably feel a bit shameful still because of what happened and in, my, in my late teens, right? Then you just, then you, you think it gets better, right? Then you get into the, the workforce. And I was, I it took me two years to find a job in, in, in Singapore, right? I graduated in the, in the economy downturn in 09 and 10, and I couldn't find a job for two years, right? And that eats into your sense of affirmation. Uh, on top of that, when I finally found a job, I was the worst performing staff for four and a half years, right? For four and a half years, you always know that you're shit. Uh, you, you know that your, your, your colleagues are either very nice to you or they have a target on your back and they're always ready to, to run you down uh, at any cost. Right, and this, then you realize, okay, you know what? Because I leave this toxic environment, start my own business. And for the first two years, uh, I had no client, right? I had no client. I earned a total of one thousand dollars over two years, mm-hmm. right? So I was never born to be that. What was the turning point for you to finally decide that you're gonna start your own business? Like, mm. because it's not a normal thing for most people to do. No, it, it was basically 10 years of failure. If you think about it, 10 years of graduation. Yeah. And, and 10 years of failure, it, it's very hard to, to, to take. Like, you, know, you just think that, that you're not meant for, for great things. I have a heart for people. Part of me st- still wanted to be a social worker, right? The heart for people is there. The one desire to help them is still there, right? But somehow no one, no one gives, gives a shit about what you have to say. Your opinion does not matter, right? It got so bad in my time in in SGH, I recall one day when I was walking from my office to the MRT, the only thought in my mind was, I need to quit, I need to quit, I need to quit, I need to quit, I need to quit. And it repeated over a hundred times from that five minute journey from office to MRT. When I got home, I told my wife, I need to leave, please let me leave my job. Her first answer was no, right? And I say, why? You, 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 you recently just quit your job and are supportive. So why can't you be equally supportive of me leaving my job now? And she said that, well, because I'm, right now I'm, I'm jobless, so we need some sense of security, you know. But that night, I backed her, you know, and she saw my desperation and she finally relented, yeah, in spite of her fear. So to today, I'm super grateful for her, for that. Mm. that. That very night, you know, I know that, okay, if I leave my job, right, I'll be leaving with purely push factors. I need at least one pull factor. If not, wherever I go next, uh, I'll be carrying this burden you know, along wherever I go. So I took out my, my cover letter and I said, okay, time to redo my resume and cover letter. You know, then I told myself, Caleb, what on earth do you want to achieve? Then I realized, you know, what, do I, what am I naturally good at? And I realized I'm somebody uh, who can happily go and volunteer to teach English in an Indonesian village for the rest of my life and I'll get paid and I'll feel super fulfilled. It's something inbuilt in me, right? And I told myself, okay, Caleb, you can either, um, you can either be an employed staff, take uh, two weeks of your annual leave and bless these kids, and you're given like maybe five kids um, in, your, in, your, in your small group, or you can be one day be the guy who says, hey, friends, I'm running this huge event to teach English in, in Indonesia. Give me your time, money, and resources. Who is in? And I realized that, why can't I be that guy? Because the impact is hundreds, not just five kids. So I realized that, that was the day I realized I wanted to impact the world. And I asked myself this question now, who are the people who impact the world? Well, they are people who are influential. So, and so I asked myself this question, who is influential? Who says things that people listen? Then the next answer 
It's that embarrassing. It was this. Well, people listen to consultant, coach, and trainer. <laughs> that, that was it. <laughs> and I told myself, okay, look, I'm just going to be a consultant or a coach or a trainer. <laughs> that was it. it. It was that basic, yeah. What, made, I, you, what made you come to that conclusion? <laughs> I was naive. <laughs> I was naive. <laughs> I was about I was 29, 30 years old. 29, 30 years old, about, about where you are right now. But I was super lost. Uh, I wish I had that clarity at, 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 at your age, you know. And, and just like that, um, six months later, I decided to be an image consultant. That was six months later. That's how I motivated, how deep in this darkness I was allowing myself to, to swirl aimlessly. Right? So it was never easy. And so when I became an image consultant, then you, you, then you, you get ready, you, know, you, you prepare your website, you learn Facebook ads marketing, then you create a landing page, and then you, you, you get ready. You know, then you send out ads uh, for people, and then you wait for the, for the results. Then I, I, I managed to meet up with, with a few people, but and during the, the session, I, I could get them in tears, you know. I could get men, we meet in Topayo Central Subway in a very crowded, noisy space, a lot of distraction. But in my one-to-one -one, um, conversations with, with these men who wanted to look better, they could even tear up during the session. Wow. They could even tear up. Yeah, that's how raw I could bring them in. Yeah. Ever, so that's okay. They go back home. Right. Then they ask the wife, can I, can I, can I sign up uh, for, the, for the coaching or the consulting? Then the wife will always say, you need for what? <laughs> and just like that deal is gone already. The decision, the decision maker says no. Yeah. <laughs> Tell that already. Yeah. yeah, so it's been like that for for first two years. And no matter who you have for free, you know, no matter how much they thank you, you realize that, hey, I, why, why, why aren't people coming to me for help? I share my best stuff, my best knowledge that I give to my paying clients. Uh, for free, and no one gives a shit about me, right? I know I can help these group of people, but they don't want my help. And that's one of the worst feelings on earth. When, when you have a heart that wants to impact people, but yeah. they do not want to accept your impact. Yeah. You're a nobody, right? Yeah. And it was, it, was in, it was in November 2017, um, a year, almost two years into my business, uh, my CPA ran dry already. I told my wife, it's time to be responsible. Lah. I should stop my business and find a full-time job. Right? And, and it was bloody humiliating lah, the thought of that because my friends told me as an image consultant, they don't know how well or how bad I was doing. So for them to just see Caleb is back in a full-time job, says one thing, Caleb failed. Wow. And it's very consistent. I was feeling in my army days, feeling in my, in, my, in my corporate world, feeling in my business. It seems like this is a common trend, right? Um, so I, I did up my resume. And I sent it out to, to many companies. And every company said no. Yeah. Uh, and then it's a very scary thought. You realize, this when you realize that, okay, Caleb, you are 30 years old. You have four and a half years of corporate experience. You are a graduate, but you're not hireable. Even I took a 30% pay cut, they still rejected me. Right? So I had no choice but to continue my business. I had no choice. That's the only reason why I'm still here today. If they had given me an offer, I would have taken it because of what we call responsibility, right? Yeah, the, 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 turning, the first turning point uh, was, um, was thanks to a guy who you have recently interviewed, Eugene Sia. So I attended one of his super brand me. He was just somebody, you know, just nobody, right? And, and during the, 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 the workshop, he was giving us titles. He loves to give people like, like a title. Like he's an abundance life coach. He loves all these fancy stuff, you know? And, and he said, Caleb, what do you do? And I go, I'm an image consultant. Okay, tell me more, what do you do as an image consultant? And I told him about how I don't care about vanity. You know? uh, to me, as a guy, I just want to get things done in five minutes and look, look good enough to get out, right? And I can achieve that. But more importantly is, how do I help people respect themselves in the mirror? Then he says, Caleb, you're not in image. You're in the perception field. Caleb, you are a perception strategist. You know? And that's how the word perception strategist, uh, which I moved on since, uh, came about. Right? And, and since then, it just opened up my eyes where perception, it's not just about how you look, how you walk, how you talk, how you portray yourself on social media. You know? and, and I realized I could be doing so much more. So, but back then, I was still in a, in, in a, in a deep well. I couldn't, I couldn't really be highly motivated. So I didn't change my, my image ads to, to realtors, to, to financial advisors. I just continue whatever all we've been doing. Except that when they call me for image, I talk about branding and they say oh interesting let's meet up and talk about that and then i told my very first client from there 
and then you close your second client, you close your third and your fourth client, right? And that, that was the beginning of the turning point. Mm. The real turning point was thanks to an, a former business partner of mine, and I'm forever grateful for that one, one three hour class that I sat in by Colin Go, right? And it's just about understanding the basics of Facebook the algorithms, and now it's like so basic already, right? But to me back then, it was like, oh my gosh, there's a science behind Facebook. So I just told myself, okay, I know a little bit of the Facebook DNA. Let me just try to, to take this final stone in my hand and just throw and see what happens. So I started to post regularly. And suddenly, out of the blue, from no one gives a shit about my content, no one gives a shit about who I am, suddenly people start to care. Right? You write business content, you get 80, 100, 150 engagements. And in a month, I just did it for one month. And I ran after a month, right? I had a mass of follow, followership really fast. And I was surprised because you still doubt yourself, right? I was still not a successful person. But people's perception of me was not that. It was only my perception of myself, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, so I, after a month, I started to run a, a paid workshop. And I just sold out. Yeah. And then that's when I realized, crap, what, what's happening here? What, what, what's happening here? It, it's not normal. I'm supposed to be the guy that people look down upon as always failing, that no one comes to me for help, right? I want to help, but people don't want. So this was a very puzzling moment in my, in my life, right? I never thrived in any area that had to do with, with work, right? And after that, that first month, I was surprised, and suddenly trial speaking and training engagements came in. And some of my ex-clients, I converted into, into your big yellow contracts of like uh, need to hire, hire five figures uh, per, per year. Right. So suddenly they were willing to, to, pay, to pay me that, right? And that, that, was, that, was a, that was an eye-opener because it's not so much about being able to impact people, but when you realize your own value, when you realize your own value, that's when you shine even more. Yep. Yeah, and it, during that time, it was, a very, it was a healing process where I had to unlearn the, 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 the lies that you tell yourself, that you are not good enough. That, that, uh, that you deserve to be the demoted sergeant. You be, deserve to be the worst performing colleague who's always bullied. You deserve to be the guy who only earns 1K across the first two years of your business. Yeah, right? And once you, I unlearned those lines over the next six months, that's when business started to really thrive. And I, I saw people give me the respect that I was trying to understand myself. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So those, those were the key turning points. Yeah. yeah. I love it. That is so, uh, that's so good because I think one of the biggest thing I caught from that story is that your, your, your one year of growth or two years, the last two years of growth yeah. um, is a result of you failing for 10 years. Yeah. Right. It's a result of you, you know, failing and failing and, you know, not meeting up to standard being the last for 10 years yeah. and, and, and trying and trying and trying and until you actually hit your success. And I think that is so profound because like in the world we're living in today, especially social media, right? Talking about social media, right? People tend to see success as something that is fast, that you get it fast. That is something that's fast paced. You can get it in a year or two, right? But people don't understand. They don't see the hardship that we have went through um, for the last 10 years, for the last, you know, one decade, even do that two decades before you actually achieve that breakthrough. Right. Right. So I think that is so good because like, I think many people need to hear this, right? That, you know, if they're not achieving success in their first year, in their second year, right? It's totally normal. It's completely normal. Like when you were sharing about how you were doing image consultant yeah. and then you went to branding, right? Basically you found your market fit, yeah, right? In yeah. marketing terms, it's like you found your market fit, right? You were selling something right. that uh, like, like, okay, you're selling that you're, you're very good at convincing people, but mm-hmm. it's not exactly something that people will just go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pay money for it. Yeah. Right. But when you turn it into from image to brand, and I, and I feel that it's also your change of target market, your change of your audience, right? Yeah. People will actually see the value in branding yeah. rather than just image um, yeah. because they see that branding can bring them more sales. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily image. I don't know, right? But it sounds like that, right? You were just trying and then eventually you found your feet. And I think it's, it's actually very similar for me, right? I, I, mm. I, I, every year, ever since my previous uh, career downfall, yeah. You know, I, 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 was, I was in debt, half a million dollar debt. I, that, that's a famous story that I've always, I always been telling. Yeah. And I remember one of the hardest things was that every year, I have to psych myself up. You know, like New Year resolution? Yes, yes. And then you'd be like, this year is going to be different, <laughs> right? This year is going to be a breakthrough year. And it never comes. 
Mm. And then the, the following year, this year is going to be a breakthrough year. It never comes. And then the following year, this is going to be a breakthrough year. It never comes. And, and this went on for like five years. And to be very frank, like I was very uh, demoralized to a certain point. Mm. Right. And that's, I think, I, I think that's how you felt. Right. I, I, I think that I could relate to that. Mm. And the success will eventually come if you just keep going. And it's not something that usually you can plan for. No, never, never, ever, never, ever. Yeah, no. Yeah, in yeah. fact, um, I was asking, uh, I was asked this question when I was speaking to a primary school, right? and one of the students and the entrepreneurial uh, session for for P success. I was quite impressed that they have these uh, sessions. It's great. And one of the kids asked me, uh, Mister Caleb, um, how 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 important are grades um, when when you in, in in school today and stuff like that? And and you know when when someone asks this question, you can kind of see the real question that she's not asking, which is she's fearing that she will not score very well. Right? And that, that will affect her future. Right? And this is my answer to her, that when, when to, to be a successful entrepreneur, it's not about learning how to thrive, but it's about the ability to survive first when things do not go well. Yeah. If, you can, if you can survive that, you are ready to thrive after that. Right? Because people who, who just has a little bit of suffering and they fall flat and they don't want to do any more, yeah. they will never last long enough to see any success. Yeah. Right? And, and success is what they can use to impact the world greater. Right? Yeah. So we, we want to realize that it's the ability to survive that, that, that grit, you know, when things are, when dust is just fire, dust are, flowing, are being thrown at us at, at, at night in the day, up down the right center, we can survive that, uh, we can thrive in any environment already. Yeah. So yeah. survive until you thrive. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So, uh, let us go a bit more into the branding side, right? So, yeah. so what is branding to you in, in today's context, right? In right. social media context, what is branding to you? And that, that's a great question. In fact, this is, you know, last time marketing was so famous in, on social media that, that until after a while, the word internet marketing got confused with digital marketing, with, with SEO, right? So, so now branding is moving into that category as well, where at the start, people are quite clear what branding is, but now that the word branding is being thrown up down the right center, people will lose the essence of it. So if I were to go to a room and, and ask all of you what's the meaning of branding, I'll get 20 different answers. So yes. for me, branding is very simple. For those who want to brand themselves with me, first, there are three things you must fulfill for branding. The aim of branding with me is firstly you, to inspire people. Next is to connect genuinely with more people. And thirdly is to prime people to pay you. Mm. Those are the three criteria I will work on to bring my clients uh, uh, to make their sales easier. So inspire, connect better, and to prime people to pay you. Uh, the third one is, is very important. Uh, if, if you're inspired by people, if you connect it very well, but they're not primed to pay you, it's useless. Uh. Don't yeah. bother, you're, you're wasting your money. Right? So these are true. Yeah, I, I, exactly like, I, I see so many people, they have like pseudo brand or they have like surface branding, right? They, they, they want to look good, but they don't want to collect money, right? Like it's not yeah. wrong, to have money, you need money to run the business. You need you need profits to continue to run the business to, exactly. to continue to serve the mission or to serve the vision, right? Yes. And and a lot of people like to work on a lot of pseudo branding, like oh, I just want my brand to look good. I don't want to sell. Every time I sell, my brand will go down, right? <laughs> like things like that. Right? So I, I like I like that. I like that. So you must prime. Yeah. Okay, so so inspire, connect, and prime people, uh, to pay you money. Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Exactly. Right. So so can you uh elaborate a bit more about um the I think inspire, we, we kind of get it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, we talk about it at the beginning where you want to inspire people. Um, and I think, you know, that, that's why I leave for, right? My social media, the stuff that I post. I'm not posting because I want to prove someone wrong. You know, you can always tell when someone is posting a, a post just to prove someone wrong or maybe yeah. they're having an argument within themselves or with and someone. Information, like, like on side with me, please. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So they, they have, you can tell their motive all the time. But I, I, learned, I, I used to do that, by the way, right? So I can relate to you when you say that you want to always be right. So mm -hmm. that was me. So my post is always like very righteous and I want to be very right. I always want to be right. And, and what's amazing is when you say, you know, being right pushes people away. And that's true. And that's the reason why I don't really have a lot of friends. Uh, you know, ever since I was young, same thing. Right. And, and there, was, there was a turning point that I realized that I should be using my voice to inspire rather than judge, rather than, you know, yeah. uh, argue with people, right? right. And, exactly. and, and so I, I had a shift and I started posting posts on my social media yeah. And every post that I post intentionally, I have to ask myself, is this post meant to make me look good? Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, or is it meant to argue with someone? Yeah. Or is it meant to inspire? Yes, exactly. Right? 
So that's amazing, inspiring people, right? And it's like is- ad, that's actually one of the reasons why your brand is one of, one of the go-to uh, internet marketers in Singapore was achieved so fast, right? I think the struggle with a lot of marketers is they're very good in attracting attention very, very fast, right? They learn copywriting and we all learn the same features and benefits and they know how to make people do a quick click, right? But many of them do not understand what it's like to connect and form a relationship. And you're one of the very first few internet marketers I know who focus so much on that, so much so that you are like Singapore's internet marketer today, right? And, and not many understand that. Many are still trying to learn the old way of attracting clients. Uh, we, we get you leads, we, we now write headlines. So not many marketers have very good, um, good engagement rates on their social media posts, right? Yeah. They're one of the few who, who achieve that very easily. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, but, um, you know, for the audience, right? Like, it's, it's yeah. because we care. Like, same yeah. thing for, for, for Caleb here, right? And, and I, I brought him on the show because I started to see his engagement going up, started to see the, the, the things that he's doing, he's inspiring people. And it all, I think it all boils down to, like, caring about your audience yeah. rather than, you know, getting, and honestly, getting the clicks, like, the, getting the clicks is easy. I learned after a while. Yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a cheat code. That's a certain flow. You write that, you'll get clicks on, yeah. Exactly, right. Just put a so, sexy lady or whatever, right? You get clicks. So I think the clicks uh, is easy, like, but easy. connecting, right? Connecting like what you said. So maybe you can elaborate more about what, what do you mean by connection, connecting with your audience? Right, yeah. So, so we're connecting. I want to firstly be very clear. We cannot connect everybody. It is impossible. It is impossible, right? The idea is that branding is to focus on who are going to be your best long-term clients not going to be your quick, um, your quick uh, machine gun and, and get all kinds of leads coming, coming to you. So my, my, my strategy is very clear. I focus on mid and long-term relationships because those are the clients who love you so much, they will either keep coming back to you or they'll keep referring you to people, right? So for me, that's what connection is. I would, for me, I attract a very specific group of audience. Most of my clients, right, or my biggest fans, they, are, they usually are quite English-speaking, right? right? They speak English very fluently. They look like uh, middle class people or upper middle class, or they come from upper middle class background, right? Uh, these are the people who naturally connect with me because I tend to give off that, that feel naturally as well without even trying, right? So these are most of my, of my target audience, right? If you ask that, 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 um, that auntie on the street, right? She won't, won't really connect with me because I'm so different from her demographic. So connecting is about knowing who is your target audience. So three things, right? Who are you, who you want, and who wants you? The, the Venn diagram, okay? Uh, so who, who are you, who you want, and who wants you, right? Once you're very clear on this, uh, you'll be naturally attracting your best target audience over and over again. So what, 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 what are some of the things I did to attract people who naturally want me or make them realize that they want me? I share a lot of my stories. I, I share a lot about, about my, my past to give them emotional anchors to me, right? Yeah, so, so connection is all about having emotional anchors. And the more I, I reveal about myself, my past and my victories, I'm giving them more anchors to hang on to. And the more they see themselves in me, the more attention I get from them. Yeah, so when I tell my stories, I'm not just telling my story, I am telling their story as well, mm. where I've overcome it and therefore they, they realize that there is hope. Yeah, yep. my, and my, that's my goal to be inspiring is to give people hope. Yeah, and by giving hope, they feel more connected because, wow, Caleb in the past is like what I am right now, right? And that makes me the person to guide them through in the, in the future. Mm. Right? So, so this is what, in a nutshell, very simply put, la, what we do to, to connect. We tell a lot of stories and this is something you do all the time, right? And this is what helping your clients do, in fact, uh, storytelling through video, right? And, and that's the power of, of of being very real, right? Being very real and having nothing, nothing to hide. Yeah, it somehow, this, this is very counterintuitive, right? When the more things you share about your past, the more it attracts, it's very counterintuitive. Yep. In, but the power is that, man, the people who follow you, they are the people who naturally want to celebrate you at all costs. Yeah. Right? Most people who don't, don't like what you write, they will automatically filter themselves away. Yeah, so yep. it just makes life so much easier la, when we yep. focus on, on, on connecting. Yeah, yep. I, I think one of the biggest mistakes um, for most people is they try to attract everyone. Yeah, right? Because they think, they think brand is like Coca-Cola or Apple, right? Where, but you got to understand that these brands, 
didn't start off like that. They are, they are using mass market strategy. But, but even Apple is not for everyone, by the way. Exactly. Okay? Every brand is not for everyone. Right? So, um, and, and what people tend to think is that like, okay, if I have to build a brand, I have to build a brand that can attract everyone. But they, they forgot that um, they don't need that many clients. How many clients do they actually need? Right? So, if you do a backtrack, like for example, uh, I remember I had, I, had a, I, had a, I had a property client Mm. And you know he was just telling me that you know I I, I want as many as much as many sales as possible or whatever. And I say okay, let's be realistic. Mm. How many clients do you need <laughs> here, yeah. right? Like to actually make a good income that you believe that is the income you want, and and not any more that will give you any more unnecessary stress. Yeah. And he told me, oh, actually I only need ten because for them you know one one new launch you know yeah. they can make fifty k, right? So it's like hey, if I if I close ten. That's uh, half a million dollars, right? I'm comfortable with half a million dollars. I'm like, exactly. All you need to do is attract 10. <laughs> Why are you trying to attract yeah. everyone? Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, this talks a lot about people who are ready for branding and those who are not. It's that people who come in with a sales mindset, I need to close, I need to close, I need to close. They're yes. usually not the most ready for branding because they, they are, their alignment is very different, right? Branding is about being very clear who you, who you want and who wants you. We mm. let the rest filter themselves out. And many people cannot accept them. Yeah. And these are times that I'll tell them very honestly that you are not ready for branding. Focus on getting a great marketer who can get you as many leads as you can if that's your priority. Yeah. Yeah, but in the long, in the long run, um, they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're still going to have forward branding. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I believe. Uh, exactly. You know what's interesting is when you say who, who you want and who wants you. Yeah. Okay. And I want to ask you a question, a lot of questions on that because I realize that's interesting. How hmm. do we bridge the gap? So what I mean by that is because... Sometimes when I, when you, you know when you ask people okay who you want, and then yeah. they will say a bunch of stuff right you know yeah. I want you know high quality people I want high net worth people and you know yeah. and and these are usually not the kind of you can tell these are not usually the kind of people they can attract. Yeah. So, how then do you help your clients bridge the gap between who they want mm. and who actually want them? Right. That's a, that's a good question. So yeah. I'll just dive deeper first into the who you want. Okay. Yeah. That, this is very important because I want all my clients to know that a. Hey, you, you, you have standards. You have a standard. You don't just accept anybody. And just by having a standard, uh, it makes more people want you already. Right? The concept of letting, letting go makes you more, makes you more desirable. Right? Because uh, you're a higher demand now. You have lesser pool of uh, people. So this standard alone uh, makes you bloody more attractive. And sometimes just having a standard makes people more obedient to you, even though it makes your clients more, more submissive to you even though they may not be your right target audience, right? So, so I'm, this is why I to you. you are a top consultant in your, in your business and therefore you only choose to work with certain clients. So I'm making them very clear about, not, it's not just about high net worth, but it's just about values as well. Yeah. Values, age group, about what, what they stand for, what, what's, how they view life in general. Um, they should be very clear who they want to work with, right? And that if they receive a client who doesn't fit this category, they're happy to refer them to somebody else. Right, so this is so this is very easy. The next part is about who wants you. Actually, this is even easier, and that's what I tell them to do. I tell them to look at your best twenty clients, just or, or for those, if you are new, maybe your best five to ten clients. Right, and by best, I don't mean the ones the ones who give you the most commission. By best, I mean those who you got along with really, really well, those that just enjoy time with you. You know, so you, you meet a friend. You, you say you're introduced to a new a new friend, and right? then. There's two ways you can go. Either you, you both have nothing to talk about, or you can just talk for days to no end, right? And for the group of people who oh, there's nothing to talk about, uh, it's just see the awkward, yeah. So, yes. so awkward, right? So we're talking about how do you find the who are the types of clients who are like the second part where you can talk for days to the end. They love, they, they really enjoy the conversation with you, right? And they were the most receptive to you. So the idea is to find the top five or maybe top top ten of your best clients. And once we list them down, to draw common denominators that these top five to ten clients share. Because there'll be something. In fact, there's a period of time where I, I, I have two uh, MDRT financial advisors uh, under, uh, under me. Uh, one, one, he targets uh, young couples. Um, the other, he somehow attracts mass affluent and high net worth people. Right? But they're both around the same age, MDRT but they attract very different people. So I asked the, the person who attracts the most affluent and, and high net worth, you know, and, and I asked them, so what, what goes on in the conversation between you and your, and your clients? And they said, oh, they always ask me about, about 
uh, advice to give their children that their teenage daughter act like that and do not know why, how to use TikTok, how to use social media, why the teenage son like, like that, Again, tell me why, tell me why. And he's like, huh, I don't know why. <laughs> right? And, and, and on top of that, I also asked him straight, the, these clients that you have, right, they've been earning millions of dollars uh, while you were still in diapers, while you were still in, in primary school, secondary school. Do you really think that they, they engage you to grow, to double their wealth? Mm. No, right? They would have just found another financial advisor who's their peer, who's so much more successful, right? Who has far better results, but they chose you. Mm. Right? So I asked him, why do you think they engage you? As we, he talked more, we, we bounced ideas and I said, do you realize that they engage you because they see their past self in you? Mm. They see that you have potential and they are really successful. They want to raise you up they are looking for significance. Mm. So I said, what do you think will give them real value? More market analysis, you know, more, yeah. more PDF that you look at the bear and the bull, the, the New York Stock Exchange, the Singapore Stock Exchange, and you tell them what, what, what to look out for. They really know that maybe even better than you, mm. right? So I said, to give them real value is to make them feel more significant. So I said, Koji, text them, hey client, I'm looking for some advice based on this. And I'm just, you're, you're really good at that. Could we have a chat? Mm. Right? Once he makes the client feel more significant, the, cli the purpose of why the client engaged him, the client will feel very shook, right? I want to feel significant. And you ask me a question, how to do time management better? I will give you my time and tell you all to do. In fact, you mean if you're good, I will invite you to my inner circle, meet my other high net worth people, come for our drinks party and just say hi. Mm. So that's how we, so in terms of value, it's back to the reason why do people engage you in the first place? Who wants you? And we will not understand these intricacies until we know, until we categorize our best audience and look at the reasons why, what is the common denominator that binds them together? Mm. Value, stage in life, um, uh, purpose, um, interest, right? So until we, we are very clear, it, we are always going to be shooting darts in the dark. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I really love that. Um, so so uh, Inspire Connect, right, which we have talked about Connect and knowing who you are, who you want. Yeah. Is it who you are, who you want and who wants you, correct? Yes, correct. I'm taking mental notes right now. And uh, this is a good start, by the way. And I, I like it when you say, um, you know, not when you list down, the, especially for who wants you, when you list down uh, the clients who want you, Right, your best clients or the best customers and not the one who pay you the most money. Yeah. Right. Because you want to be able to serve people that you can, uh, like what you said, you can converse, you can have a relationship with uh, that in a way gives you life. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because even though those people who are giving you more commissions, you're actually not earning more money. Right. You're taking away your life. Exactly. Jesus yeah. once said that, uh, what is it to gain the world but lose your soul? And I, I think that has a lot of meaning to that, right? Because right. It's, it's like, you may earn more money from these people, but you are dying serving them. <laughs> right. Then right. what's the point? You are actually right. exchanging, right? Your, your, your life, your, your soul, and, yeah. and, and more headache and more heartache later on, right? right? For the sake of more money. When you can actually serve some clients with maybe lesser money, yeah. but you actually enjoy doing it. So exactly. it, it becomes a win-win. And they, they become your business lot healer as well. Mm. Oh, awesome. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, and because we have a lack of time, but uh, I want to cover the last point, which is uh, priming them to actually pay you money. I, I like that. So could you elaborate more on that? Right. So people can love you, like you, trust you, but if they, if they do not know you're doing well, if they do not know you're in high demand, how do we expect them to, to, to engage you? Right? Mm -hmm. We have to respect that people need some level of social proof to be that final bridge. Right? So for me, um, at the start, I, I had no social proof right? when yeah. I was still very new and having an upturn in my, in my branding. But at, at a point in time, I still had no social proof. So I had to rely purely on connection and, and, um, and, and inspiration. But once you have social proof, right, you have to let people know that you are in demand. Because why they cannot be forced to choose, to close their eyes and choose the right um, vendor at random. They cannot. So it's our job, if we are good in what we do, 
we have to somehow let the whole world know that we are we are good, right? And there's usually uh, one reason why people fail to do that. Okay, sorry, two reasons. Okay, no, sorry, one reason. No, two two reasons. Okay, firstly is they either do not know their value, right? Or secondly, they do not have to communicate that they are valuable. Mm. It's usually one or two reasons. So this is what I call it. Uh, it's like a ten dollar note, right? Yeah. Ten dollar note. Is, we know that the value is ten dollars. Yeah. And you know how we can fold it. The usual thing that trainers say, we can fold it, crush it, spit, and smash on the floor. The value is still $10. Exactly. Well, people sometimes forget they are valuable. So this is something that we all learn like crazy, but it's actually an extension to this analogy. So in front of me here, right, I've got a, a North Korean 5001 note, a North Korean note, right? And if I was to give to people on, on the street, do you want a $5,000 North Korean one or a $10 uh, $10 sing note, which, which do you want? Okay, I run this on my workshop, majority of them say, 90% say they want the $10 note. That's why they understand the value. They know how this $10 note is, is going to be uh, applicable, how it's going to be utilized in their daily lives. Very nice, very nice. Right, so exactly. So many times uh, we have value, but we don't have to communicate our value to people. And this is where the, the bridge becomes broken, right? We, 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 we know we are good. Um, I know I can help you, but you don't want my help because you don't see how I'm applicable to you. So it's our job as business owners to give proof that, 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 that you can change lives, right? So I always would teach some of my clients certain strategies to, um, I call it a subliminal brain hack, right? How do you subtly drop the idea that you are doing well, that you are in demand, that you close this case, that you met another prospect. How do we suddenly drop these hints so that people know your value and at the same time don't feel repulsed that you're being very pushy? Yeah. Right? So, so it's going to be a, um, a, a skill set of being able to, to communicate in a way that people go, oh, wow, 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 wow. On top of that, they already love you because you inspired their life like crazy. On top of that, they are so connected to you because, wow, this experience you went to. I experienced it before, so you are like me. You know, this priming thing seals that deal. Yeah, so much so that if they, the one day when they need such a business, uh, you are the instant go-to. You're the only choice. Yeah. Wow, that's very nice. So, um, so maybe I can just summarize on that. Yeah. Uh, basically, two, two points that I, I got from there is basically know your value, right? You got to know your value and you got to be able to communicate your value, right? And of course, yeah. priming your value, letting, letting people know Know, that you are high in demand, right? That that you are you are this value. You have, you have to yeah. communicate the value to, uh, to your clients. So yeah. when you ask for the money, you know, is a is a natural choice that they're gonna give it to you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. Um, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, I have uh, honestly learned a ton, uh, from this conversation alone. Uh, re regarding branding, I mean, like, um, even though I you know I, I do marketing, I have been I mean I'm I'm on the scene. I'm doing I'm doing all the stuff. Run a marketing agency, but always still learning and and. To be honest, I'm, I'm learning a ton from this conversation itself. So I, I hope that those who are listening, you, you, you guys are taking down notes uh, because these are the stuff that, you know, like even though like, I'm learning from Caleb right now, these are the stuff I unknowingly I'm doing as well. Yes, okay? you, you are. You're doing a fan. A lot, a lot <laughs> of times, you know, we can be doing, doing, unknowingly doing something, right? And, I'm your fan, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and it's amazing how you put it into such an easy to uh, understand framework, right? So it's basically um, inspire, connect, and priming people to pay you money. That's awesome. I want to ask you one last question before we end this uh, podcast. It's a bit more fun question, okay? Sure. So basically, okay. you know, um, I've been asking this question for all my guests recently because of this whole uh, circuit breaker, the lockdown is going on around the world. You know, what is the thing that you miss most right now, you know, in this new world? What do you miss about the old world? What is one oh. thing you miss about the old world? Wow. Oh. I guess... <laughs> Since it's a candid, I'll answer candidly as well. Uh, yeah, I, I miss packing all my stuff for training, putting all the markers in, the, the, the drawing blocks. I miss uh, lugging everything around in my suit and taking MRT and, and reaching, at the, reaching the venue at uh, 8 a.m. to prepare for the 9, 9 a.m. Uh, training. And then you go there, you have to set up your camera, make sure that your, your mics are all fully charged up to last the entire journey. And then after you end, at 6 p.m., you lock everything home, packed up, then you get ready to pack up and go back the next day. So uh, I guess yeah, I miss I miss that. No, but no, no, I don't miss anything. I don't miss anything. To me, to me, whatever we have here is a gift. 
it's really a gift that we have. So I think the, once we learn how to, to enjoy this process, uh, I, only, I only miss doing well. I only miss doing well. And the only way to do well is to quickly adapt and, and see what others aren't doing and do exactly what they're not doing. Yeah. And this is the only thing I, 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 so I don't miss anything. I only look forward to the next change. Yeah, because I'm going to quickly adapt. I'm not going to sit and, and whine anymore at the start of April like I did, right? Yeah. And, and just continue to, to bless people like, whatever platform that I'm allowed to, to do. Yeah, awesome. Where, where can uh, my audience find you, Caleb? All right, so there's two ways to, to find me. Like. Um, so I have my own, my personal profile is the best way to connect with me, right? And I do share quite a bit of uh, value there. So Caleb Lau, you'll see like, the kid Wearing the, the exact same same thing, uh, the orange striped striped tee and this this blazer. It's some I did plan it. All right, he's wearing this and he had a big smile, uh, no eyes, and a profile photo. So thank you for that, right? And the second way to look for me, and we'll leave it, um, in, we'll leave it the links uh below for those who want to connect with me. I got my brand awesome community. Yeah, so that's where um I I, I don't I don't publicize this group very much because I don't need mass numbers. I only want people who who are serious to self invite themselves. So I, I, I've never publicized this group uh, even to today. So we're only at just under 200 people, but it's very high quality. People in that group, uh, they are usually fairly successful uh, within that group. So I plan, I'm, I'm not too in a rush to, to join it, but if you find that you want to be in this community, network with people who are similar uh, value, values and of value, right? And, to, and that's where I'll give most of my best branding, branding uh, content, then uh, go ahead and search for the brand awesome community and okay. just fill up the form and I will accept you guys in. Awesome, and it's free to join. It's free, is it free, to join? It's free. Yeah, pure, awesome. pure value, pure value. Awesome. awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're gonna put all the respective link uh, in the description. So once again, thank you so much everyone for watching the Story Impact Show. I hope you have benefited from this episode itself. Uh, you know, Caleb Lowe, amazing stuff uh, on branding. And um, by the way, if you love our content so far and you benefited from our content, please remember to help uh, like this video and as well as subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell that will greatly help us with our algorithm so we can reach out this message to more people because I believe that more people need to hear branding message right more, more people need to hear uh, the different kind of speakers that we have on the show uh, the kind of value that we're bringing uh, to the marketplace so once again I'll uh, thank you so much for watching this and thank you Caleb for being here and I'll see you guys very soon. bye for now Pleasure.